Hey guys, it's Dimo from Demostech, and today we are converting our computer from legacy BIOS mode into UEFI. So first of all, I want to talk about what will you need, what are the requirements in order to convert your computer into UEFI mode. So in short, you need two types of things, I would say. First of all, your hard drive or SSD or NVMe, whatever it will be, need to be formatted in GPT mode instead of MBR and usually on older versions, you would format your disk into MBR. Now, MBR and GPT are basically sort of two ways on how the disk that you have saves the file storage. I mean, uh, where each file is written physically on, uh, on your drive. So GPT is a newer version. It allows you to be used on higher capacity drives, more than two terabytes, for example, while MBR was at maximum for two terabytes of drives. The other thing is needed, obviously, is that the motherboard of a computer will support UEFI. Now, most of the motherboards today, and for quite a few years, I would say, already support UEFI, so that shouldn't be a problem. So we should be good. Now, since we will need to restart our computer a couple of times, and since the process, um, well, I would say not tricky, but you don't need to do some stuff, this video will be shot on the DSLR camera and it will basically shoot the screen. Obviously, I'll get closer to the screen. Hopefully, you can see all the commands, but anyways, I will write everything in the description of this video. And also, I'll give a link to an article that explains all the process itself. Now, why would you want to do that at all? So, people say, and I don't know if I can agree, but UEFI should be faster than legacy boot. Now, in terms of booting the PC itself, UEFI should be faster and I would say that it is. But in terms of loading the system, the operating system, the Windows itself and working on Windows, it shouldn't affect the speed or anything at all, at least as far as I've seen. And I cannot confirm what my friend said that it will work faster. But the boot should be faster anyway. And that's pretty much the reason that you want to do that. Now, when I started to hear about UEFI, the only thing that I knew is that you need to format your drive into GPT, choose UEFI on your motherboard, and only then install a specific Windows version that supports UEFI. But on my computer, I already have Windows installed under MBR uh, with legacy and everything as is working and I didn't really want to format anything or to start anything from scratch. So after a quick search on Google, I discovered that it is actually possible and pretty easily to convert your current system into UEFI without any issues. And that's exactly what I did. Sadly, while doing that, I didn't think about doing a video about it and that's pretty much why you see a very blank sort of windows installed behind me. Basically what I did is disconnected my original SSD, connected a small SSD that I had, a spare SSD, installed Windows 10, I think it's Pro or Home, I'm not really sure, it's 64-bit, and it's on MBR and Legacy boot. And now we can convert it into UEFI. So, let's begin. So first thing first, we want to check that our system is indeed on MBR and also on legacy boot mode. So we're going to hit start, MS Info 32, and you should see system information. Click on that, and here in this whole list, you should search for BIOS mode, here it is. And as you can see, it's written legacy. As long as it doesn't write UEFI, we should do what I'm about to show you. Now our disk on the other side might already be in GPT mode. So we're going to the start button, we're going to right click it and choose disk management. Let's expand our disk management. So in my case, Windows is installed on this test SSD. So it's disk zero. We're going to right click this disk here and go to properties. Here we'll go to volumes, and here under partition style we should see master boot record or GPT, and in our case it's master boot record and we're going to convert this drive as well. 
So, in order to convert, we'll actually need to reboot our computer into the command prompt. So how do you do that? We're going to press start, do a settings here, update on security, then press on recovery, and you'll see here advanced startup. We're going to use restart now. So, now that our computer is booted into this weird advanced options, we need to press on troubleshoot, press on advanced options, and then command prompt. Please note that the command prompt might be in a different position here, so please read what you're pressing on. Now our computer will reboot into the command prompt. Now, if you have multiple users or you have password protected users, you might need to enter into your username and enter its password. So, now that our Windows is booted into the command prompt, and to be honest, I had to do it a few times because I had some issues with the previous setup. Anyway, let's continue. So, what we're going to do is, first of all, validate our drive. Basically, we're going to write mbr to gpt space slash validate. And as you can see, mbr to gpt validation completed successfully. So, now basically we can continue into almost the same mbr to gpt slash convert. And this should take some moment to actually happen. And here I have to note, this process cannot be undone. So please back up all what you have on your computer before you do any of that stuff. Anything that you'll break here, I won't be able to assist you in any way because this is sort of one way ticket. Anyway, in our situation, I have nothing to lose because it's just a test, so let's go ahead. And that's pretty much it. And as you can see, before the new system can boot properly, you need to switch with firmware to boot to UFI mode. And that's exactly what we are going to do now. We need to switch our BIOS into UFI mode. Now, sadly, here I cannot really assist because there are multiple motherboards, multiple versions, multiple firmwares to multiple motherboards, basically infinite options. But what you need to do is reboot your computer into your motherboard settings. Sometimes it will be by pressing the Dell key, the delete key on your keyboard. Sometimes it will be one of the F keys. For example, for me, as you'll see soon, it will be F12. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll type exit and we'll have F12 in my case. And as you can see, we have the Windows Boot Manager, we have the Kingston, basically the SSD that I have now installed, and enter setup what we are going to use. Now, sadly, this thing is different for every BIOS, so it's really hard to help you here, but you should find an option called, and I'll see it in a moment here, Boot Mode Selection or something like that. And as you can see, it's set to Legacy in my motherboard. So in my case I just press enter, choose UEFI only, or I can do UEFI and legacy, but it might slow down some things while booting up. In this case we'll try UEFI only, then we'll go to save and exit, obviously save, that's pretty much it. Our computer now should boot, if everything is working properly, into Windows 10 with UEFI and this is how you can see that. You'll see on your motherboard sort of icon the same sort of wheel of loading windows. Sort of a merge up, I would call it that way. And as you can see, our windows is already boot. Let's log in just for fun. And as you can see, everything is working the same. Now, obviously, we should check that everything is indeed in UFI, in GPT, and everything. So, We'll go again to the start, right-click it, disk management, let's expand that. Now as you can see, I did disconnect all my other drives because I think one of them was set to boot Windows or some sort of 
one way or another, and it did mess things up. Anyway, as you can see now I have only one disk, so we'll go ahead again, click properties, go to volumes, and as you can see, partition style, do it partition table or GPT. That's exactly what we wanted. Now we'll close that, click on start and type ms info 32 or if it already finds it. And now we'll again search for BIOS mode and as you can see it's currently under UEFI. And that's pretty much it, we've finished our conversion and we should have now faster boot times with a newer type of boot, UEFI. Thank you for watching this Demostech episode. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button and hit the bell so you won't miss any future video. And I'll see you on the next one!